Miss Melissa Bell. Did everybody get my notes? All right, I live at 6382 Beaver River Road in Duluth. Um, as I've been coming since June this year, or last year, uh, I'm speaking on the extractive use or gravel pit permit at 6464 Freedom River Lake Road that was approved in air and needs to be made null and void. Um, there are multiple facts that were not presented at the Planning Commission hearing. There is no 60-day time limit to have this permit voided. There was a motion to dismiss hearing, and the case was dismissed. It was never heard. So some are saying that this is a null topic because it was in court. It was in court, and it was not heard. The judge did not feel he had, um, was not, uh, did not see fit to hear the case. So that's sometimes we're hearing some mistruths to make uh, us sound less legitimate. Um, I have seven points that uh, explain why this issue, or this, um, this permit needs to be null and void. The subject tank I talk about a lot because they discussed at the time of the hearing the Toms is to be living at the property still. That was discussed for quite a while in depth of why the two year rent, everything else. Uh, and it was known prior to this approval that the subject tank was in non compliance. This was not a hidden secret in government. It was a hidden secret from the Planning Commission and from the people, the citizens. We did not know this. Um, the, the land was owned by Mark Toms at the time of the approval. Now, the application actually says that I certify that I am the owner or authorized agent. Lakehead was neither. Lakehead didn't own the property until two weeks, 14 days after the permit was granted. Not even the hearing. The hearing was in March or in May. It was, per, it was, it was approved in July. They owned it July 14th is when they owned it. The sketch uh, map uh, that Lakehead presents omitted a residence on the property where the easement road was placed. And the easement road crosses their driveway. Their electrical box is 10 feet away from the easement road. How did no one notice that from the county? I have a hard time believing that wasn't noticed. Um, it's very evident through aerial footage. Uh, the McKeever pit. You, so you can't have another pit, that a gravel pit that is not reclaimed, that it's in the ordinance. Uh, yet the McKeever pit is known in a 2008 inspection that it failed due to severe reclamation issues. Nothing has changed. I have asked for formal inspections and been ignored. Um, other issues currently going on is there are three ways to enter and exit this pit. One is a primary, there are two side roads. Either way, those two side roads do not have gates to, to bar people from coming in. That's illegal. <clears throat> it's a safety issue and it's in the ordinance. Um, also, this, this current location uh, has reclamation issues. Uh, there is a huge, when they cut down, it was a, a pine, like they had pine trees, a whole bunch it was for uh, lumber, uh, and uh, a pile, a huge pile, never got removed. I don't know why, I did not, it's not my business. But it's there, you can see it from the road, actually. And uh, it's a fire hazard, it's been there, we're going on three years now, so at least two years it's been there. Uh, not been removed, that's an issue. That's supposed to be removed for the, for the ordinance. Um, and this site is also visible to multiple neighbors, and you can actually, as I said, see it from the road. You drive there, you can see it. You can see that log pile I'm talking about. The first items one through four um, specifically pertain to the errors in the application that make this permit null and void per the ordinance. Um, you know, any issue, uh, any permit issued uh, on the basis of the application, which is an error, whether the error is intentional or not, shall be null and void. <laughs> any permit issued on the basis of mistake in fact or law, whether the m mistake is intentional or not, shall be null and void. No permit may be constructed or construed as per permission to build or be, uh, begin a land use. It shall be the responsibility of the director to notify the property owner upon discovery of erroneous, uh, the erroneous application. I have given the director the information, and the director, the, the planning department, and you guys ignore the facts. The attorneys ignore the facts. They try to find every way to ignore it, including uh, for formal uh, complaints, to have <coughs> uh, inspections uh, not be documented, to have air inspections. There's no proof of it. By allowing this permit to stay active, the county commissioners and the planning department are allowing, um, have allowed the precedent to change regarding the approvals and conditions of the county permits. 
Why should anyone in the county be required to comply with Zoning Ordinance 62 when not all are required to comply? We have two standards here, and it is not okay. Thank you. Thank you. Except we have Peyton Sitch. <clears throat> Commissioners and others, how are you this morning? Uh, my name is Clayton Sitch. I'm a member of the Friedenberg Township Board, and uh, I've been on the board for 10 years. And we have reduced our levy by 10%. Hopefully we can reduce it by another percent or two this go around and that would put us at 12%. So we are definitely looking out for the people. Um, you know, we've been going at this for a long time. This is coming up on three years. We've been attending these meetings under the instructions of Minnesota Association of Townships attorneys to attend and bring our um, issues to you. Um, one of the big things I'm starting to discover, or I think I'm discovering, so I've never had, a, I paid a lot of lawyers, but never was one or is one, but it seems like we might be dealing with something called civil rights violations. You're treating different people under the same laws differently. It's, uh, there's been a lot of difficulties with the county. The county uses word games for all kinds of things run people down one way, they call them inspections, they call them, uh, they call them visits. Uh, there's all kinds of funny little things that have been going on for a long time. Hopefully at some point in time, I know I sent, you guys got to listen to uh, some of the noise that you're going to create for the neighbors, and you may hear from neighbors from time to time. I think one of the things that we're going to have to start doing is we're going to have to look to find out if there is a civil rights violation here or some violation because you're not treating everybody the same. And I, I believe that we're going to have to look at a federal magistrate someplace to see what the heck is going on here because this is not the only place you're doing this. There must be a, just a dandy bunch of these things. And it's, it's just been a drip, drip, drip for so doggone long, all the stuff that you've given us. It's amazing what you've given us and what we've given you to actually work on. And it's nothing has come back. It's the same old story. We had, now we're, go, we're before our chief law enforcement officer with a complaint right now. And we'll find out what that, how that works with the, with the new sheriff. It didn't work with the old sheriff. So now we're with the new sheriff, new sheriff in town, I guess. So. I think over time, this will be resolved and you will do the right thing. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's really too bad what you did and what you continue to do. And you need help. And if the help is truly not coming from you, you need help from the outside. And that's what we're gonna try and give you some help. Thank you. Thank you. Except we have Bruce Anderson. Bruce Anderson, 4929 Fish Lake Road, Duluth, Minnesota. St. Louis County Commissioners are elected officials who oversee county activities and work to ensure that citizen concerns are met. I underline that. And work to ensure that citizen concerns are met. Federal and state requirements are fulfilled and county operations run smoothly. I don't think county operations are running too smoothly, certainly on this issue. My township is 30, roughly 36 square miles, 25 square miles of land, 10 square miles of water. When I grew up, my neighbor was Saracen Brothers Sod Farm, which is now the Fordson Pit. Johnson Hill, beautiful maple landscape, is now dirt works. It's a crater. These are all within probably a half mile of each other. Mommy. I grew up with Eric Matz and the old basket weaver. John Kaharski, colorful man. Ole Shogren, another colorful man. John Nicholson, my neighbor. Art Pearson, to name a few of the old, the old timers. The town dump a mile from my house was also known as the Friedenberg Exchange. 
my dad would take us there and he'd come back with more shovels and things than, than garbage that he brought. He'd always come back with something. We had open land then, no close neighbors unless you were on a lake. It was easier, it was easier to let things slide, maybe to issue a permit because we just didn't have the population. We had more open land. It was easier to do that with, with few complaints. Fast forward. We have neighborhoods now. I live in a neighborhood. As I ran for township supervisor, I, ran, I covered the whole area. I drove from one neighborhood into another neighborhood into another neighborhood. We can't act the same way like we did back in the 50s, 60s, maybe 70s. We need pits, yes, we do. And we need sand, yes, we do. We don't need 6464 sand. We don't need that pit, which is in violation. We don't need that. It's a small pit, yes. In a small township, yes, with a huge impact. Huge. There are citizens' concerns that are not met. It's your job to ensure that citizen concerns are met. Instead, we're called liars with no backing. You have documents of facts, and your silence speaks volumes. It speaks volumes. Unravel the web. Unravel the web. You have neighbor, you have said neighbor against neighborhood, neighbor against neighbor in my neighborhood, in my township. Small pit, small township, big impacts. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Okay, we, uh, on to Lee. I think there's some. Yep, the Linnea process. I'm Leanna Process, um, 4829 Fish Lake Road with Minnesota. I live near the 6464 Friedenberg Lake Road where the gravel pit is set to be put in. So near that my parents who live next to us can see the area cleared for the pit from their window. This gravel pit would have a significant impact on my life. My husband and I are raising our three small kids out in a truly amazing piece of property. It is amazing because I'm having the honor of raising the fourth generation of our family on this land. And we get to have family living next door to us. The last location we lived was a nice place to live. But after criminal activity in the area rose, we left to the place I felt the safest, surrounded by family on the land I was raised and now raised my own children. That property and the safety, peace, and high quality of life is in jeopardy if the pit goes in. With the noise pollution, dust, and high traffic, we would have this safe place we fled to no longer be that anymore. One other impact this would have on us is financial. If we are unable to stay, which is a real possibility due to all I have mentioned before, we would have absolutely no place we could go. We have had many financial hardships these last few years, and where we are at right now, we would unable, be unable to afford anywhere else to live. We not only are looking at losing a piece of my family's history if the gravel pit goes in, but we are facing an impossible situation in which I do not know how I would take care of my family. I am just one voice being heard right now, one person who trusted the people in charge of the area to keep me safe. But I am just one who has been able to come and talk to you today, and many of us cannot due to scheduling conflicts. Others don't come because they are just too brokenhearted. They are too devastated to think about the impact the gravel pits will have on them, and I have talked to many people who feel this way. This would be a tragedy if the company had come in and gone through all the proper channels to make this gravel pit happen. The, this heartbroken community would be an unfortunate victim of progress. But this is not a tragedy. 
It is an injustice, an example of the leaders we trust to protect us choosing to look the other way and not enforce the rules set in place. And their negligence could cost us everything. I ask you not to change the law. I ask you to simply uphold the law that is already there. Thank you. Good little helper there. <laughs> Except we get Ole Olson. Thank you. Ole. <clears throat> He's still a loyal Vikings fan. Uh, yeah, I see that, man. Yeah. Rotten for punishment, I'm <laughs> telling you. I hear you there. Another year. Another year. I should have a badge for that. <laughs> so it's been almost three years since we've been fighting this battle from our neighborhood in Friedenburg Township. In two months, it'll be three years. March 15th, three years ago, is when we got a, a notification that the gravel pit's going in. So anyway, the, the reason why we fight is, because, is pretty simple. It, bar it buries down to me, and we're trying to protect our way of life in this quiet neighborhood that we live in. It's not just the township. It's a neighborhood, and we are a neighborhood. And granted, when you drive by through the neighborhood, around it, most of the houses you can't see because they're, they're, there's water in your way or there's trees in the way and you can't see. But we continue to fight and we will continue to fight. And when I say we, I can only speak for myself and my household, my family. But here's where someone just touched on a few minutes ago. Everything that's been said, I don't have a heck of a lot to add to it, but something that was touched on that you better start paying attention to, folks. It was brought up a little bit ago as civil rights violations. I don't know what kind of business you guys have been in in your lifetime, but I've been in them. And for many years, something that could never be done the name for that civil rights violation is disparaging treatment. You can't give a lower interest rate to a white guy and a higher interest rate to a black man. You can't give a lower interest rate to a Native American and a higher one to a Russian. You can't treat people differently and what's been going on in this county for a long time is, is that different townships get treated differently, different neighborhoods get treated differently. All of that's got to stop because it's illegal. It's very illegal. And so I think that you probably should get focused on doing things the way the letter of the law. No more disparaging treatment. Thank you. Thank you.